right, so in the previous video, we took a look at the three main recording modes that we have available in Studio One. If you haven't checked out that video, I would highly advise pausing this or stopping this right now. I'll make sure that there's a link in the info cards above. Go take a look at that video so you have a basic understanding in terms of how uh, how Studio One works. We have our auto punch, our pre-roll, our pre-count, and then our none of those uh, enabled. We have a basic manual mode. All right. That being said, when we talk about these recording styles and these different workflows, there are different ways that we can get Studio One to behave with respect to how it handles working with layers or in Pro Tools terminology, uh, playlists. So if we hop over to Pro Tools real quickly, this is something I mentioned in the last video. I'm gonna go to my preferences. Uh, if you go to operation, this is something I've had enabled for a long time automatically create new playlists when loop recording and also for editing send fully overlap clips to available playlist while recording i'm pretty sure that most people are going to have an idea and an understanding of what these are but for example if i wanted to engage a loop record mode right i have my looping on and let's say that i wanted to continuously loop through this section over here i'm going to take all my pre-roll off if i was to record arm this track or rather record enable in Pro Tools terminology, and I was to engage recording, we're gonna go like this, it's gonna basically do the first one, and now it's gonna go to do the second one, we're gonna keep talking, and now it's going to go to do the third one, we're going to keep talking. When I push stop, I have playlists. Now, this is really, really useful. We can switch to an actual playlist view if we want. Here's our main one, and then we have our other two ones. Now, in terms of sending uh, the other preference that we had, send clips to a new playlist if it's fully overlapped, that basically means that if I was to um, record something and I didn't overlap it, let's use this one for an example. Let me engage record mode. So check, check, check one. If I push stop, we still have access to both of these audio files, right? But let's say that I recorded over top of the whole thing. So we're gonna go check, check one, check two, check three, check four, stop. Now this, because we've overlapped that recording entirely, it's bumping it down. So these are kind of important behaviors to take into consideration when we talk about how Pro Tools records. I'm going to open up this little cog wheel. If I click this, this opens up the record panel. Now within the record panel, we have a lot of different options, but the main things I wanna focus on here is takes to layers, okay? Takes to layers is really important if you are used to that style of workflow. So I'm going to enable takes to layers. Now I'm also going to open up the, the preferences because I wanna talk about one preference in particular. This is something that we have and it is a track based preference. So for example, I'm going to create a new track. Now we have track two. If I click track one and track two, notice that we have independent settings over here. This is one thing that I wanna to bring to your attention. It is called play overlaps. Okay, how do I explain this? As a Pro Tools user, this is something that if you had this enabled and you didn't know what was going on, this could potentially drive you insane, uh, which is why I have the replace mode set over here. Basically, this allows you to have multiple audio clips that are overlapping each other, and instead of having one that cuts the other one off, if they're overlapping, that you could literally have two sets of, um, you could have audio playing back on the same track. For me, this is incredibly um, confusing. And also it's a little bit conflicting when you take a look at all the different preferences that we have in Studio One in terms of some of these options, like for example, uh, where is it over here? No overlap when editing events and things like that. So. I would advise that you make sure that this is deselected. And also I do believe that there is, let me go to my song setup, um, stretch, uh, okay. I can't remember where it is exactly, but I think if you were to attempt to create a new song, let's go to file new song. I believe that there's an option. Yeah, there's a play overlaps option, which I guess would kind of globally allow you to adjust this. I never have this on ever. And I would think that uh, anybody who's a Pro Tools user wouldn't have this on either. Okay, that being said, let's mute these events over here and let's hop over to track two. So I am going to record arm track two. I'm gonna switch my monitoring over here and let's take a look at this style that I was talking about. Now I am going to basically make a loop brace selection. Let's go over here. 
Now, the other thing is, I think it's worth mentioning that for this particular case, um, I'm going to disable this, but we'll come back to this in a moment. So I have a loop brace that's active. Now, we know what this does if we're using an auto punch style workflow. Okay. But what happens when we're using our takes to layers? I'm going to actually leave the record panel open as well. Okay, well, I'm going to close the console, and I'm just monitoring whatever's happening here from my levels that I see. And basically right now, I'm going to make sure that my loop is activated, right? So I have a shortcut, a key command that I can use, which is the forward slash key, or we can just activate it here. So we have our metronome active, and we have our loop brace enabled to two bars at 120 BPM. So now I am going to start recording uh, exactly at bar one. And this might be actually a case where we talk about the pre-count being useful because I'm starting exactly at bar one and I don't have any ability to hear anything before that. So with our pre-count enabled, we will hear that count. But one thing I will do though is I'm gonna change my pre-count from two bars to one bar and we'll close this. Okay, so now let's engage recording. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Two, two, three, two, four. Three, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. Okay, I'm gonna push stop. So, a couple things I wanna point out. First of all, notice over here, we have this little section over here and this is indicating that we have layers. Also, another thing to point out is that if we right click, we have the ability to expand layers. Now, there is also a preference that allows you to basically have the layers expand by default. I generally have this off, especially in cases where I'm working with something like perhaps multi-track drums or even cases where I have you know, three or four different microphones up, uh, I find it a little bit annoying to have all of my tracks open up. So this is something that can be found in, we'll open up our preferences, advanced editing, expand layers after recording takes. Now, if I was to do this and let's collapse this and let's move over to this track and we'll, and we'll set a loop brace over here for just a one bar loop brace. We'll record arm this and engage recording. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, stop. Notice that it expanded. So this might be a preference that you want enabled. And if you do, that's something that can be found in advanced editing and expand layers. Okay, I'm gonna deselect this though. Okay, now in terms of the way that this works, in terms of how things are basically shown, um, it is, is the top take will be the very first one you did. The bottom take will be the second one you did. Now, the third take will be the third take that you did. And also, whatever take it ends up on top when you are loop recording, uh, it is going to match the track color. And in addition to that, it's just going to use the last take. So um, also, you can see that we have these different colors available for our takes. So when we start comping, these colors will show up. Now, these are the main things that we're going to see when we're using a loop style record mode where it's basically doing takes to layers. But the other thing to point out is that we don't have to always have loop enabled. For example, I could deactivate loop and I could work with any one of these record modes. I could work with pre-roll, I could work with pre-count, or I could work with auto punch. And then as long as your loop is basically disabled, so it's not engaging a loop recording workflow, then any one of these record modes that we use, I'm gonna collapse the layers on both of these. Um, it will basically be activating the layers, right? So in fact, I'm going to just do a manual punch in in this particular area. Maybe I'll drop in somewhere around here. I'm gonna punch in, I'm gonna punch out. One, two, three, okay. So when I did this, notice that now if I expand my layers, that this is available here as another take, okay? So this is something to take into account is that regardless if the the ins, the audio event is smaller in Pro Tools it's basically only if it passes through the whole entire length of the audio clip that you will get a layer and in, in Studio 1 you will get it even if you do recording just a little bit. So and also if you have a layer that's available and there's nothing overlapping, it will continuously use that amount. So for example, I could set a super small auto punch point over here to just over here if I wanted to. 
and I would drop into my auto punch mode. And now when this records, it's actually going to drop in uh, uh, over here in this section and it's gonna use track one, take four. So if I was to record, okay. So you see, it, it doesn't necessarily always open up a new layer. It will use a layer if it's available. And if it wasn't, it would have put this down to track five, or rather they would have created a new layer and given me layer five. So I'm trying not to make this too confusing and hopefully this isn't, but these are the main styles of um, workflow that we have. Now, obviously if I, let, let me come out of auto punch. Obviously if I overwrote this whole thing, entirely and I record it over top of it. Let me do that. So we're recording a brand new take over here. I haven't lost anything. I can right click and expand layers and notice that this is now becomes its own layer. So once you have everything, once you understand these modes and how you can combine them, use all three of these modes, pre-count, auto punch and pre-roll together or do manual drop-ins with that preference enabled. Once you understand how things work, it becomes very easy. I'm gonna come out of record mode here on this particular track and let me switch my monitoring over and let's go back to this one. If you recall, we did a takes to layer style workflow uh, when we were recording. Now, I would recommend um, definitely mapping out a key command for expanding the layers. This is something that uh, is very useful in terms of when you're editing. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't always use these types of workflows. They are amazing if the artist wants to comp, and this is something we're gonna focus on in the next video. But in a lot of cases, I actually prefer um, to work with, uh, with takes to layers disabled on a track by track basis. And let's, for example, call up one more. And I actually just prefer a lot of the time to work in a mode where I use the replace option, takes the layer is disabled, and I just do punch-ins, and I will do manual punch-ins. Um, I don't use pre-roll that often, if I'm going to be honest. I usually do a manual punch-in or use auto punch because it gives me the most control in terms of where exactly I'm recording. If I needed to record myself ever, I could do that easily. But I also think it's much easier to commit to things on the fly when you start getting in the cases where you have lots of different uh, takes available and you need to edit those as you're going. Sometimes I actually find it to be something that holds the session back as opposed to just moving forward and committing to ideas as we go. Anyways, that's it for this video. And in the next video, we are going to be taking a look at comping in Studio One. So I will catch you for more in the next video.